Welcome into Chapter 13, Metadata, Scheduling, and Control. I'm Kirk Harnack, your professor for Streaming University. Let's jump right into the subject of metadata. So metadata usually comes out of your automation system. That's where it's stored, right? Title and artist information is stored there in the uh, automation system. We want to get that information onto the stream. We probably want to get it onto your FM station as well if you're running an RDS uh, channel as well for data there. So how do we get that information into the streaming encoder? Well, the good news is Zipstream encoders, all of them, have built in this metadata filter. So even if the format of the data coming in to the Zipstream is not exactly right, and believe me, it's going to be different for all these different automation systems, even if the format isn't exactly right, the Lua metadata filter, that will format the data directly for your stream and then send it on to the built-in streaming encoder. So typically, we have a situation like this, where we might want metadata to go to the FM transmitter, to the RDS encoder for that, so that your FM listeners can see that metadata. We also want metadata on our stream that people will be listening to uh, mobile or on their computers. So there's where the Zipstream fits in between the automation system and your listener. Now, that metadata, um, sometimes we want a little bit more uh, information than just the title and artist. Wouldn't it be great to schedule other announcements uh, on that metadata as well so that your listeners can see that kind of thing? Maybe EAS messages, public service announcements, seasonal reminders, promo messages, hey, birthday announcements. You can do all that with aggregation software like I'm showing here from Center Stage Live. This is CSRDS, and it has the ability to take metadata from several places aggregate it, and then put it out formatted just for the service that's needed. The Center Stage RDS software can format the data for your RDS encoder or for your streaming encoder, or both at the same time, actually. It can also schedule announcements and do lots of other useful things with metadata. So this layout you see here would be very typical for a station that wants to have good-looking metadata all the time. Now, let's go look into the um, metadata capabilities of the Zipstream itself. Here's the metadata section where you set it up. The first thing you do is add a metadata source. And you choose whether that metadata is coming in via TCP or UDP, and you specify the port number, or if it's coming in through an RS-232 serial connection. Once you've selected that and given it a name, you can choose the metadata filter that's going to be used. And uh, it comes with about 17 filters that are built in to the Zipstream software or hardware. Um, the filters, by the way, these are little mini programs that are written using the Lua programming language. If the metadata filter you need isn't included, well, there are a couple of options. One is to create one yourself using Lua. Uh, plenty of documentation is available. In fact, here is um, a complete uh, filter listing. This is what one would typically look like. Uh, this particular one was written by Fred Gleason at Paravel Systems, and it's for the Rivendell um, Padpoint a part of their automation system for getting metadata out. The other way to build a metadata filter is to actually run a little program that Tello supplies to you to capture metadata coming in from your automation system. Then you send that capture to the support team at Telos, and they will write you a little metadata filter and send it back to you. It's just a small file. You put it in the folder directory and um, invoke that particular filter, and now your metadata should all be formatted exactly right and look great uh, on your stream. So that's a quick look at metadata and how you set it up and how we handle that within the Zipstream uh, encoders. Next, let's take a look at scheduling. Did you know that you can schedule an encoder to be on or off? Yeah, you know, not everybody that's on the internet uh, needs to be on 24-7. <laughs> what if you're covering a city council meeting, for example, and it starts at 5 p.m. on uh, Mondays, and uh, by the time it's over, it's 7 p.m. on that same Monday. Well, you can schedule an encoder in the Zipstream to be on and off. So it'll come on when you need it and go off on schedule. You can also change audio presets for your processing on a schedule. So if you've got a format that varies widely, like maybe some college radio stations do, you can have the right audio processing preset uh, be active at the right time by using the scheduler that's built in to all of the, the Zipstream products. Finally, let's talk about control. The Zipstream X2 software and RD2 hardware includes advanced control options. Now, 
Most users will never need these advanced features, but they are included just in case you do. We already know about the browser-based graphical user interface. Now, that takes advantage of HTML5 protocols, and it offers real-time control in a graphical environment. But if you're familiar with programming and scripting, then you can use the RESTful API. That's available too, it's included. And also, Simple Network Management Protocol, or SNMP, that's included as well. Programming scripts performed in Python, C++, Perl, and Ruby, those are available too. So for easy user installation, Hardware GPI is also available in one product, the Zipstream R2. And finally, Livewire GPIO protocol is supported as well for changing the stream source. So there you have a good look at uh, the metadata and scheduling and all the different ways to control the Zipstream software or hardware.